so we're back. And this, this, you're going to see a rare side of me. Not really want to get angry or get annoyed. But sometimes you go on the internet and you see or hear things or you read things and you sometimes wonder what gives you the right to say what you say and think that it's okay. You've had an incident this coming week with a man. I'm not going to, not, not even going to name. Yep. He doesn't, even, yep, he doesn't right. even deserve it. Yeah, you're right. Okay, go ahead. He doesn't even deserve any type of recognition. We're going to touch on this subject or you're going to touch on the subject, but I'm not going to say his name because that would be too much for him and he doesn't deserve it. So Rick, I don't want to pull, say, a cornet and just start talking massive crap about somebody. And you know what I mean? Because it's like, I don't like, I like to be nice to people. I really do. Yeah. As much as an a-hole as some people might think that I am. I'm actually a very nice person. And a lot of people. You? This. Yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, I'm not that bad of a human being. You know. Uh, never had, I, I don't have a bad word to say about you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So I've ran into an incident with another human being that uh, apparently they just don't like me. I, I, I could I, I, the part that they're a human being is the part that I'm kind of questioning. So I don't want to make fun of anybody or you know make fun of a disability or anything like that. Okay, so this person what has what's that? What's that? That's what we do. Yeah, no, it's not what I do. I have you know a son that has. Uh, learning disabilities. I have another son that has learning disabilities. So it's not something that I take lightly. Okay. And there's a guy out here that, um, you know, a couple months back when I was really rolling and doing probably two, three podcasts a day, this is why I have enough recorded that I probably don't have to record anything if I was to release one episode per week until probably mid to late September. Now we're in the, uh, the second week of July here when yeah. this airs. So this person just thinks I'm rolling on, recording new stuff. This is the only show I've been recording, okay? This show. Mm -hmm. This is the only new show unless me and Marcel are getting together, which uh, we haven't had a lot of time to collaborate as of late. You know, yep. uh, he's got a lot going on. He just got a house, et cetera, et cetera. He's doing stuff to his house, which I fully understand. So in the meantime, in uh, between April and May when I was uh, – recording all these two to three uh, episodes a day and still doing the uh, Sunday night shows with Marcel. Yep. I had to sometimes put some to the side, sometimes cancel some, sometimes have to reschedule some. Some of them that I just have not actually rescheduled as of yet, which I'm still working on. Uh, and uh, Ref uh, Major, don't worry, I'm, I'm getting to you very soon because he and I have uh, become buddies as of late and I really like that guy. So, you know, I had to reschedule on him recently. We have another guy that just has uh, decided to, you know, uh, he has a little bit of a handicap and it has nothing to do with it. But the fact is that I got became concerned about this gentleman after we became uh, somewhat friendly after me interviewing uh, an, an older NWA wrestler called Tommy Angel. Okay. Uh, we became friendly. He, I, I got an email from him, and then we kind of swapped back and forth emails for a little while, uh, you know, for a, a while, and then eventually he exchanged phone numbers, and we came pretty friendly for a while. And then he kept talking about coming on the show. I said, yeah, probably, maybe, blah, 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 blah. So during this busy, busy time, I became extremely just worn out, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. between working three jobs. I was working 14-hour days trying to maintain a podcast, three, two to three uh you know, shows, recording two or three shows a week to, to keep in the can. So uh, am I am I making sense so far? So yeah, far? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh. And, you know, not that you owe anyone an explanation as to what you're doing on your personal time, because right. no one, no one Some, needs to know. Right. That Some people also don't understand that I have a family. I have a wife and I have children. OK, now my son, has, my son has come up here uh, from Ohio and um. I have not done a lot of recording outside of the weekly show Harry and I have been doing. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I've done maybe one interview a week because a lot of the interviews I have have been already recorded. So uh, I became concerned about this gentleman because I had not heard from him. I had to reschedule. So I had, you know, I um, had not heard from this gentleman. So I became concerned that I know he had a lot of health issues and he was a handicapped gentleman. So I, I decided to give him a phone call one night and say, hey, I haven't heard from you. I just want to make sure you're still alive, basically. You know, I was hoping yeah. nothing happened to you. And he was fine. We had a nice phone call. Uh, we talked about, um, you know, wrestling and life. And then uh, we hung up the phone after about 45 minutes. And he called me back about 20 minutes later. And we had a, uh, because he forgot to say something, and we had a, another relatively 20 minute conversation. To in which I check my email about 10 minutes later, and there's a long rant telling me off about how I am a liar and a piece of garbage. And this is after uh, the phone call. This is right after the phone call. Literally about 10 minutes after the phone call where it was very, very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and this is the thing. I'm just like, I tried, I emailed him and I was just like, listen, man, I'm, you know, I tried to make peace with the gentleman basically. Okay. And that's just my style because I don't like friction amongst anybody. Yeah. I don't, I hate it. I hate feeling uncomfortable talking around. Like if I'm in a room where, I have heat with somebody or any of that kind of stuff. So I tried to make, uh, you know, to which was ignored, to which I end up getting another one about 20 to 30 minutes later. Oh, I forgot with another long. Meanwhile, I, I, I didn't even get to the best part yet. So meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, telling me off and then I go to respond trying to make peace. And meanwhile, I look and he had CC'd several members of the professional wrestling media uh, uh, community, and I'm going to name these gentlemen here as to see. Uh, first, he asked me, he said that he would like me to interview Gene Ligon, who was one of the Thunderfoots in the uh, Crockett era NWA in the 1980s, which I said I would love to interview him. I'm a big fan of him and then the, the, the Thunderfoots. Thunder, yeah, Thunderfoots, whatever. Yeah, Thunderfeet. Either way. Um, so, <laughs> but then in the meanwhile, so he's tagging Gene Ligon, telling me off. He's tagging Tommy Angel. He's tagging Greg Oliver, the head of SlamWrestling.net, and tagging Kyle Davis, the announcer and COO of the NWA. I said, what the hell are you tagging? I had to write to each of these members individually, apologize for them receiving this email and that they should not be receiving this email and explain the situation. It's unfortunate that someone felt so strongly to step over a boundary so far over as to CC members of the pro wrestling media and pro wrestling industry as far as like guys like Kyle, like say Kyle Davis of the NWA and, uh, the gentleman from slam Kyle was very f fine with it. Like nice about it when I, when yeah. he responded to me. So I, I, I have to, I'm grateful that, you know, he just didn't sit there thinking that I was some moron no. sending an email apologizing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anybody with a right mind would think that, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, yeah, well, it's, just, it's an unfortunate situation. Well, I also, um, Ended up the next day, got another email that was about three to four pages worth of an article type in a magazine where I was just like doing the same. And then, uh, uh, did you have something to say here? I'm sorry. Before no, no, no. I, I, was just, yeah. I, was, I was celebrating the fact that you yeah. got another email. Yeah. Well, then I'm sitting there on my couch, I think, uh, a couple nights later when I get my phone uh, gets it goes off. It's a tech message saying it's from this gentleman that's been ranting. That's been ranting, mind you. Uh, uh, go check my YouTube. Actually, before I back up, I, I need to back up just a tiny bit. That uh, and my meanwhile, this whole time I'm sitting here trying to make peace, like saying, "Listen, dude, we don't need to be arguing about this. Let's just try to fix this. If you need to come on the show, if that's going to make you happy, yada yada, let's do it, right?" Yeah. Yep. And he submitted a article to me that he wanted me to post. Blah blah blah. And so I was, I told him, I explained to him, said, "I'm." building a website, but I want to make sure that I have enough content before I launch something, right? As far as 
articles written. This is how ridiculous this is. So he kept going on, and then he said that uh, he he I should uh, the only people I want to interview was Northeast indie talent, and or, or that's like the main thing that I do. Now, mind you, this is how I got my start interviewing talent out of the Northeast. Guys like Lucas Chase, guys like the House of Pain, guys like the Guardian of Chaos, Big Daddy, guys like uh, uh, Hunter Tarka. Guys like name somebody else I've had paid in full Steven Garcia. Um, uh, anybody you can name anybody wrecking ball Ligursky. This is how yeah. I've gotten my start because I am from the Northeast and I started a podcast and I had easy access to these gentlemen and I was giving these guys a platform to get out there and be able to go do this kind of a thing. Okay. Aren't you, aren't you an announcer for an indie for Northeast Indie? I am a an announcer for Coliseum Pro Wrestling. I do uh, commentary on their streams. Uh, so I am you're proud me, to be doing that. Yeah. So wait, wait. I, I just need to do this math here, okay? You're telling me a gentleman who lives in the Northeast, yeah. who is a commentator on a Northeast. Indy is interviewing Northeast superstars. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. That mind you, he lives in the New England area in uh Pennsylvania. Okay. Formerly from North North Carolina, but you know, growing up in the Mid Atlantic to the South Atlantic area, I thought this guy might have some good stories. So I almost caved and gave in and had this guy on the show. No, you know what? I wouldn't give him a minute on your show. Well, the, 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 us talking about it, obviously we need to get it out there, but even us talking about it is giving him too much time, giving him too much attention. Yeah. Let it's not that I only interview guys out of the Northeast because I've had some amazing, amazing yeah. legends on this show, amazing talent, current time. I've had Nick Aldis on the show, okay? I've interviewed Alex Kane, current MLW world champion. I've entered Blake Chadwick, current NXT announcer when he was with MLW. Uh, Mike Falvo, who is currently uh, MLW ring announcer. Uh, you have so many different people from so many different walks of wrestling, even as far as age or even promotion or even like branding. Like you've had everyone from every aspect of wrestling. What more can this gentleman want? Well, I love the sport of professional wrestling, so I'm really? going to have who I want on, whether it's a legend yeah. or whether it's a guy that's currently out of the Northeast. If I, you know, if I, shit, if I can have access to WWE and AEW, guys, I probably would. I've had, shit, I've had guys show. from the AEW on my show. But this is your show. Exactly. exactly. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. To go as far as, like, I just don't understand the mindset behind all of it. I am the producer of this happy. show. I, oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I gain uh, – nobody's going to tell me who, I'm, who I can and no. cannot have on this program. Harry might be the only one that could uh, assist in that manner and, and giving suggestions as to who uh, – well, I'm not going to say the only, but he is part of yeah. this program now. So, hell, if and he wants he, to he bring somebody that. in, all he's got to do – Call me on the phone and say, hey, we're oh, having we boom on the show this coming Tuesday or Wednesday or Sunday, whatever. And I say, no problem. You know what? You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this, right? I I, I have time. I have a lot of time. Oh, we have we have quite some time left looking at the clock. Yeah. So we can – I got to play something too as well before we uh, get off. Line up some interviews. How about we line up some interviews, Rick? We'll talk as soon as we get off the show, and we'll start lining up some interviews, some interviews with all those amazing Northeast talent. Yeah. Because yeah. you know what? They deserve it. They deserve the spotlight. And if it does, if it's not okay with you, then by all means, and I say this with all due respect to everybody who's watching this show, hey, man, just... There's other up. podcasts out there. There's yeah. other television shows like, out there. There's I, other... I media outlets out there you don't have to listen we would love us. for everyone to listen to us we yeah, would we absolutely 
absolutely love you it. Could, I would love for respectful. everybody to stay on this show. Yes. Just be respectful. If, you know, one week the episode isn't for you, come back next week. Maybe we'll have something for you. You know, yes. like this, this show is a little bit of something for everyone. We Sometimes we're not going to please everyone. But to go as far as what this gentleman did, we'd rather not have those type of fans. And I apologize to say it like that. He went as far to make a YouTube video or to include me in a YouTube video. Okay? I saw that. Yeah, I know a lot of people did. Well, I shouldn't be giving this guy this time or views, but I've shared this with a couple people. I've actually downloaded it and clipped it uh, because it was he's going on and on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you the title of the video. I don't want you guys to like go and watch it because I don't want to give this guy the time of day or the views, but he uh, goes on and on talking about Jay, uh, Jay um, Youngblood. Yep. Who died 40 freaking years ago. Okay. Uh, making up a story about him or I, I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to say assume that it isn't. It's 40 years ago, first off. And wondering why the, the, the Romero family, which is the Youngblood family, are calling him and threatening him. He started this and then he making a video ranting and yelling at them. And then calling me a piece of garbage and a liar. I'm going to play that clip. It's about a, a minute and a half here. You mind if I play that? By all means. Here we go. Now, secondly, let me address another issue regarding the PWZ, Pro Wrestle Zone podcast, produced and hosted by Rick Del Santo. I first became uh, acquainted with Rick Del Santo uh, earlier last year or late last year or maybe earlier this year i'm not sure when he did an interview with tommy angel 80s professional wrestler tommy angel and i enjoy rick del santo's podcast here's what i don't enjoy i don't enjoy being lied to or lied on or anything like that if you don't want me on your podcast because of my views that's your prerogative, Rick Del Santo, or anybody else. But tell me the truth. If you don't want to publish my article that I wrote for you free of charge on Tommy Young, 80s pro wrestling legend, referee Tommy Young, and 70s pro wrestling legend Tommy Young, and 90s pro wrestling legend Tommy Young, then that's your prerogative too. But what I do like is people who tell me the truth. So, Rick Del Santo, I'll make you a deal. I won't call you. You don't call me. And we just end it right here. Because I have a channel of my own. The only people who should not be calling me are the Romero family slash Youngblood family or people like pieces of garbage like Rick Del Santo. I'm a piece of garbage. Did you know that? We've encountered a troll nothing, here. Nothing, not that like even hearing that again made me sick to my stomach. Like the gall of this gentleman to go as far as to call you a piece of garbage. Like he doesn't even know you. He doesn't even know you, and what he doesn't understand is the 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 message that he's spreading is harmful in so many ways. Yeah. But the thing is, he sits here and plays the victim, right? When he's yeah, the and one then that's Brad, sitting here. Yeah. And Brad, I have a channel. And uh, uh, yeah, let's see. How many, let me see. Like, he's got so less having, than 200 subscribers. We're pushing on 3,000. Excuse me. That's not even important, Rick. If you have your own channel, why are you worrying about what we're doing on ours? I just I I don't understand what I mean, why? Like, this is I mean, why? and it's not like I wasn't mean you know the guy the guy didn't even uh, appreciate the fact that you know I thought something was wrong with him so I decided to call him because after not hearing from him for months he was so, fine so, on the so phone and then just you, go off so just to reiterate you gave him a wellness check pretty much yes sure he yes. was good. Yeah. And then he went on and threw you under every imaginable bubble, imaginable bus 
in the Connecticut region. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Well, guess what? We don't need I, after this. We don't need to talk about him no more. No, this Let will not. Uh, this will not be be uh, a part of this show any longer. Um, I'm literally, you know, I reported the video as slander uh, yeah. and harassment and bullying. Yeah. So you know he it talks the big game, talks tough, but you know I don't want to be mean to somebody that like like this gentleman, a handicapped gentleman. He's and, a keyboard and, warrior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very upsetting to sit here and have to actually talk about this on this show, which I try to avoid topics like this on this program. It's supposed to be strictly professional wrestling. Well, from now on, let's just keep it there then. This is the end. Let's, let's cut it right here. There you go. We will interview... Northeast Indy guys going forward, as well as wonderful professional wrestling legends, talents, historians. Uh, let's see anybody that we feel like. So thank you for that. The way it uh, is. 